Now that we've looked at how to import the scanner class and how to construct an object of the scanner class, let's look at some of the methods of the scanner class. Two of those methods are next double and next int. Both of these allow the user to take in real numbers and integers from the keyboard. For this program, I've written out the basic shell, and we want to use the information that we've learned from the last video. If we're going to use a scanner class, we have to import it. So at the top of the program, before anything else is there, we have to include our import statement, which is going to be import, import java.util.scanner. And the first thing that we're going to want to do in our program is create or instantiate an object with the scanner class. So first we write the class name, which is scanner. And then we write an object. We can name the object anything we would like as long as it follows naming convention. So I'm going to name mine from key, meaning from the keyboard. And then we say equals new, which allocates memory for the object. And then we're going to say scanner, which is the name of the class again, but it's a constructor. We're going to say system.in, meaning we're going to take information in from the keyboard. The two methods that we're going to look at are nextint and nextdouble. But before we use them, what we want to do is we want to prompt the user to enter in information into the keyboard. So we're going to use a simple system.out.println statement. So we'll say system. And inside of here, we're going to ask the user to input a number. So we'll say, please input an integer. So what we're going to do is we're going to take in that integer and store it into a variable. So we create a variable int num equals the name of our scanner object, which is from key, period, and then the name of the method. The name of the method is next int. Because it's a method, we have to put parentheses after it. And then we add our semicolon. Now, we have it stored in the value num, and we can do anything we would like with that value num now that it's stored there. So what I'm going to do is simply print it out. So I say system.out.println, and I'm going to print out num, but I'm going to tell the user what num is. So I say the number you entered is, and we're going to say num. So if the user is able to enter in a number, we should see that number pop up right after they enter it. Let's go ahead and first compile our program, make sure there aren't any errors, and run the program. So it says, please input an integer. Let's use 15. And it says the number you entered is 15. Now, you might have noticed this minor inconvenience of asking for a number on the second line rather than asking it for on the original line. When the scanner class is used, it's common practice not to use print line here, but rather print. And let's go ahead and run the program and see the difference. So do you see that the cursor now is on the same line as please input an integer? And so when I enter in 15, it goes on the same line. and It just looks a little bit better. And it says the number that you entered is 15. Now, if I try to enter in a double, I'm going to get an error. So if I said 15.5, and the error makes sense, input mismatch exception, meaning that I was looking for an integer, but you gave me a double. If I want to enter in a double, instead of next int, I want to use next double. And we're also going to have to change this right here because this is no longer an integer, but rather it is a double. So when we run the program and we put in 15.5, it says the number that we entered is 15.5. So that is how you use both nextint and nextdouble to take in input from the keyboard. Don't forget to add your parentheses after nextdouble and nextint. Also, don't forget to use print here as a method rather than print line, just for formatting sake. And finally, one thing to do when using the scanner class is to close it when you're finished using it. And the way that you do that is to use the method close. So you use the name of the object, which is from key, and you just say dot close. And that closes out the scanner object that we were using for the program.